Hi guys, this is tablenews.com and I'm here with a tablet called Allview TX1 Quasar. It's a very interesting model from Eastern European brand Allview. We're dealing with an 8 inch tablet and the interesting bit is the fact that it has a 3G SIM slot available right here so you can make calls from it, phone calls and video calls. It was launched just a couple of days ago and it costs $312. Once again, 8 inch diagonal and it has a dual core CPU and we installed the Apex launcher on it in order to make it run faster. As far as the design go, goes, well, it looks a bit like the Motorola Zoom 2 Media Edition, the 8.2 inch tablet that launched quite some time ago. So as you can see the design is quite similar, we have two speakers at the bottom, here you can see the back camera. This one um, is a 3.2 megapixel camera, here we have the entire array of ports and slots, and the design is sturdy and solid, the thickness is 9.9 millimeters the weight is 435.7 grams and as far as ports go well here we have the micro usb port that's used used to charge the device near it the audio jack and also microphone and here we have the uh, micro sd card slot and the sim card slot right here so all the ports and slots we need on this side right here then the stereo speakers and then we have a front camera available right here and a bunch of buttons obviously so let's see them here we go these are the buttons I'm talking about so we have the back button right here volume buttons and on off button pretty comfy to press easy to find right here at the top you can press them anytime you want start up the screen so the design is actually pretty good it's a combination of plastic and metal aluminum very sturdy resilient and it doesn't creak so it's a quality device. The only thing that's lacking from this device is maybe a lid for these slots, the 3G SIM slot and the micro SD card slot. Maybe a little lid in here would have made the design a little bit better. Okay, now as far as hardware is concerned, on this tablet we get an 8 inch IPS LCD display. It's a capacitive multi-touch screen with a resolution of uh, 1024 over 768 pixels and a 4 to 3 aspect ratio on this tablet. Inside we have a dual core processor, it's a Cortex A9 in case you're wondering, 1 GHz in frequency, so dual core processor inside, and the GPU is a Power VR SGX531. You should probably know that this tablet also comes with a GPS and it has a 3G phone calls and video calls, it has 4 GB of internal memory of which two are available to the user, one gig of RAM, and the microSD supports up to uh, 32 gigabytes of extra storage. Other things worth mentioning is the fact that we, aside from the physical volume buttons, we also have virtual volume buttons. It has already become sort of a tradition for uh, all the tablets. And continuing the specs list, this here is the 3.2 megapixel camera without flash, so the main camera. And this here is a 0.3 megapixel camera used for video calls. We get HSDPA connectivity on the device with speeds of up to 7.2 megabytes per second when it comes to download. And we also get Bluetooth 3.0, Wi-Fi, micro USB 2.0, a G sensor. We also have a compass and a lithium polymer battery on the tablet that uh, has a capacity of 4000 mAh and it's a 3.7 volt battery. As far as the battery performance goes, I have to mention that on paper, they promise, and by day I mean all of you, they promise 400 hours of standby time and four hours of use, plus 5.5 uh, hours of talk time. In our tests, we have achieved five hours of functioning time. We actually have a screenshot of the functioning time available here somewhere. So as you can see, we easily passed 4 hours, 4 hours and 35 minutes. The most of the battery is taken by the cellular standby, so trying to connect to a cellular network via 3G takes the most battery. Overall, you should get about 4 or 5 hours of functioning time, and of those 5 hours, we use the tablet 2 hours for gaming, 2 hours for YouTube, and 1 for web browsing. So that's the battery performance for you, 5 hours.
Ok, time to test the audio and video playback to see the multimedia capabilities of the tablet and for that I'm going to rely on YouTube. Sadly, the YouTube application, the standard one, doesn't seem to work on this device, that's why I'm going to use Chrome. And a nifty little song I have bookmarked. It's a chill out dubstep song from an artist called Mitis and I'm going to use his song to test the speakers on the device. So here we go. And this is the maximum volume. Okay, now the conclusions of this playback. I must show you the speakers yet again. Dual stereo speakers at the back doing a very fine job. And the bass is very nice, I particularly like the clarity and the fact that the back of the device doesn't vibrate. For those of you who are familiar with modern devices, well, the iPhone 5 and the iPad mini, for example, they will vibrate if you listen to a song at the maximum volume. This tablet doesn't vibrate, it has good quality speakers, clear sound, loud sound and a nice bass. Now it's time to also test the video playback. For that I'm going into the gallery checking out some trailers and checking out GTA 5. So the latest Grand Theft Auto trailer to check out the brightness and viewing angles on this Why slate. I, here? I guess it was the weather. Or the, uh, the thing, the magic. You can also change the way the image fits the screen. You see it in the, movies. I the colors are very vivid and very bright. And as you probably know from my other reviews, the brightness isn't turned all the way up in order not to make funny effects with the camera. So viewing angles, pretty good. Okay, the tablet may be a bit glossy, but still viewing angles are pretty decent. So you can view what's happening on the screen, even at a, an angle. Brightness is good, colors are good. This is an IPS panel, so the colors and the uh, viewing angles were guaranteed to be good. Okay, so enough with the video playback. The conclusion is that the brightness and viewing angles are great. Colors are also great. My only regret is that the tablet only plays 720p. I wish it had played the uh, full HD, but that's life. You cannot get everything. Okay, now let's test the camera. And in order to test the camera, I'm going to use this little globe, this ship in a globe and start the camera app. The camera is right here in the corner. So let's start the camera. It's actually a very interesting camera app. You'll see in a minute why. So here we are and this is the ship. And now let's take a pic. Obviously you shouldn't expect too much from this. It's a three megapixel sensor. So here it is. This is the picture, blurry, a lot of noise as you'd probably expect. So these are the options, like white balance and a couple of options like incandescent, daylight, cloudy, plus a bunch of effects to play with like mono, sepia, negative and a couple more, plus some scene modes and the usual settings like storing location, playing with the exposure, self timer and anti-flicker. However, things change when we go to the video. I was actually impressed by the huge number of options here, aside from the effects and time lapse. Apparently we have a lot of options to play with. Video quality, store location, exposure, scene mode, video duration, microphone, anti-flicker and audio mode. And the surprises don't end here. We have here a panorama mode and a very strange and interesting option. Apparently you can take sort of 3D pictures with this device. So you create 
a couple of pictures and then you turn them into sort of a 3D photo like this one so you can actually press it and view it in sort of a 3D it's not exactly the photosphere from Android 4.2 but it's still a cool way to view 3D objects and that's always a bonus for this device okay so this is it as far as the camera is concerned obviously disappointing camera 3 megapixel sensor lots of noise grainy pictures however an interesting 3D option just to pass the time so this was the audio and video playback and camera test now it's time to check out the OS as far as the OS is concerned here we are Android ice cream sandwich 4.0.4 available right here and as I said we have customized this with the Apex launcher so let me keep this press here we are this is the Apex launcher the original launcher that you saw in our unboxing of this tablet the Allview TX1 Quasar was very slow that's why I resorted to Apex because it's fast it's clean works just fine and I solidly recommend it to install on every Android device you own of course if you want to this tablet is bundled with the Bdefender mobile security antivirus solution with a malware scanner anti-theft web security and event viewer it's actually a pretty nice app and now I'm going to show you a bit of web browsing since we have Chrome installed here we go Chrome this is the leftover Android uh, YouTube playback Here's the virtual keyboard on the device, quite comfy to use in keyboard, in a portrait and landscape. And let's check out our website to load it in landscape for now. So it's loading reasonably fast, trying to scroll around. Not so happy with the scrolling, could have been a bit faster. Let's try a bit of pinch to zoom once again a little bit of lag is felt but in a reasonable amount if there is such a thing as a reasonable amount of lag and this is the portrait view once again with scrolling and zooming in chrome so this is the web browsing experience on the slate decent but nothing more than that and now there's that part of the review where we compare benchmarks for that I'm going to resort to the gallery and I must mention which the models that we're using to compare right here are so this is an 8 inch tablet that's why I'm comparing it to two other 8 inch tablets this is the Allview TX1 Quasar I compare it to the Iboda Supreme X80 another Romanian tablet and to the Motorola Zoom 2 Media Edition also an 8 inch device just as a reminder the Quasar costs $312 the Motorola Zoom 2 costs $316 in the 18th edition and the Iboda X80 it costs uh, $202 so pretty close price tags aside from the Iboda model okay so in quadrant we scored 2600 points compared to the 4800 of the Iboda model and 2700 of the Motorola Zoom 2 so we're not sitting, sitting actually well in quadrant a bit of a disappointment quadrant in Tutu we scored 5800 compared to the 11000 of the Iboda model and the 5700 points of the Motorola Zoom 2 Media Edition next up Nenamark once again disappointing 15 frames per second here compared to the 49 frames of the Iboda model in Velamo things change here we score 1012 points while the Iboda model scored 893 and the Motorola Zoom 2 1060 points moving further browser mark 2.0 1440 points we beat the Boda model that only scored 9968 points finally we got a sun spider test right here 2102 points so the bigger the better or the lower the better here we got beat by both the Boda and the Motorola Zoom 2 8.2 inch so the conclusion benchmarks are not great on this tablet although real life use is surpassing both both the Motorola Zoom 2 and the Iboda model that will show you in a following review so you should probably not follow the benchmarks every time since as you can see this tablet scored lower but I prefer it to the other two models
because its screen is nice and the multimedia capabilities are also nice. But moving on further from the match marks, this is a tablet with a phone feature. Here it is. This is the dialer. You can actually call people from this. This is the contacts list. So you can start dialing people. And the call quality is quite good in spite of the voice being a bit synthetic. You can also use the pair of headphones with a small remote with a button to make calls. It will look ridiculous if you hold the tablet to your ear. And aside from um, making a call, you can also send a text using the messaging app. So this tablet also replaces the phone. So you can place calls from it, which is pretty cool actually. And the quality is reasonable when calling people. Of course, we have the usual selection of standard Android apps. This includes um, Maps, this includes Gmail. So here's good old Gmail. And as I said, there's also Maps in here somewhere. We had to download it, it wasn't pre-installed on the tablet. So let's look for Maps with the ever-changing icon. Here it is, Google Maps, looking fine on this dual core 8 inch tablet. So we got Maps, we got Gmail, we got phone calls and all of that for $312 on this tablet. Obviously you can enter the Play Store and download applications. There were some older tablets that didn't support the Play Store and that was a bit of a bummer. You can also socialize with people using Twitter like this and Facebook obviously. Twitter is working just fine on this 8 inch tablet and now let's show a bit of Facebook. This one loads a bit harder as usual problems are encountered in Facebook. So here we are, Facebook statuses and some uh, pictures posted in the timeline and of course the main area of the interface and options on the side. So that's all you can do with this tablet, place calls, socialize, check your email, take a bunch of 3D crazy pictures, listen to some music, play some games and obviously there is a widget section right here that you can place on the screen. Obviously there is multitasking and I certainly wish we had Jelly Bean on this tablet but maybe someday we'll get the update. Ok guys, time for the conclusions and the pros and cons for this tablet. I'm actually pretty impressed by the multimedia capabilities of the device. That's why I have a lot of pros. The battery is a pretty big pro. 5 hours, I say it's pretty decent for a $300 tablet. The fact that we have 3G is a big bonus and phone calls are also a bonus. The viewing angles at the brightness of the screen, once again, things I appreciate about this model. And um, the sound system, I also like that. The stereo speakers are doing a fine job. The camera has a nice 3D effect and the design is solid. A pretty resilient tablet combines plastic with metal. So those are the pros. Now the cons are the fact that the standard interface from the device and its launcher originally, well, to put it simply, they sucked. That's why I installed the Apex launcher. Also I regret the fact that we do not have a HDMI port here somewhere. It could have used it, the HDMI port. I also regret the fact that we have to charge the tablet using the micro USB. I regret the lack of full HD playback and the crappy camera. Also the fact that the internal storage is 4GB is something I consider to be a bad thing. Now to give some grades to this device, well, we give it a 9.3 out of 10 for design, 9.5 out of 10 for hardware and a 7.5 out of 10 for the operating system and user interface, especially because of the lack of Jelly Bean and the pretty crappy original launcher. The total grade for the all view Quasar TX1 is 8.76 out of 10 and this is tabletnews.com with an interesting tablet. Bye bye.